Welcome to Your Thoughts, Your Reality Radio with your host, K. William Spencer. This program is geared to help you see what thoughts and or beliefs are holding you back from being your best for yourself and those around you. Your life is only as good as your thoughts. For more information, visit our website at www.ytyrradio.tk. That's www.ytyrradio.tk. Now, here's your host. Hi, and welcome to the show. This is Kay William Spencer, your host, as always. This is Your Thoughts, Your Reality Radio. And today, our guest is Josie Milner from Missouri? Yes. Okay, I thought you said Kansas at one point. Josie Miller is a country music star in the rising. (laughs) Okay, I'll put it that way. (laughs) She is a lead singer of her own band called the Josie Miller Band. (laughs) And we're going to do, of course, uh, what she's doing now and what uh, she has done to transition to this point. In other words, what got her to want to be a country music star. So uh, we're going to do that in not quite the last half of the show, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Josie Miller has been involved in dancing. She has been involved in rodeo. She was a cheerleader in high school, and she's played softball, which she says is t-ball, and basketball, even though she is only five foot two inches tall. <laughs> <laughs> And the only reason why we're actually doing a shorter version of that slingshot effect to tell us about the transition. She does have a story to tell about her transition, but she's only... How old are you again? I'm only 17. (laughs) There you go. You heard it from her mouth. (laughs) Okay. But I tell you, this girl is bubbly. She's vivacious. She can tell you a lot of stuff, and we're just going to have a lot of fun just listening to Josie tell us her story. So, Josie, tell us about your... Well, first of all, welcome to the show. Oh, well, thank you. (laughs) It is definitely a pleasure talking with you off air, and we hope you can carry that vivaciousness right along right here on the show. So, tell us about your country music show and your career as you want to see it. Well, um, I pretty much grew up listening to country music, so that was what I was always listening to, and that's what I really loved. And, uh, you know, to be able to perform out when I'm only 17, be able to perform in different venues that I wouldn't even be able to get into if it wasn't for performing, um, it's kind of a crazy life on its own. It's very exciting, and I'm always uh, getting new experiences and meeting new people and being able to uh, just have many memories made that I'll always be able to cherish and have with me. And, um, you know, I I get to play out all the music that I love when I get to be with a band that's like my second family. And uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty awesome. You don't hear every day a 17 year old be able to pretty much live her dream as her career at her age. That's true. But you just got me thinking about something here. You said that you have a band that's like a second family. Are they around your same age, or are they a little bit older? And how did you guys how did you guys meet each other? <laughs> no, they are older than me. Um, they're actually about twice the age as I am. So it's pretty funny whenever I get a boss them around. I'm the youngest, but um, I actually I I met them through auditions, and then through auditions. It was people who was recommended and who would who were thought to be able to fit in well. And, uh, you know, the group of guys that I have now, it's kind of crazy um, how much we do act like a family. We, we, of course, we have our fights, but then again, we still have our fun. We still get to laugh and just uh, pretty much act like a family. And I get to be so comfortable up on stage with them. And they're always there for me. And uh, it's it's just awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so it sounds like you have more of a stable band, not to say you younger guys out there can't be stable, but, <laughs> um, you know, these, these days everybody, well, it's always been that way with teenagers, just we, this is something I want to do today and tomorrow it's like, no, I want to go home and play with my Xbox, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have committed artists or musicians to work with and they're almost like, um, I would assume most of them, if not all of them are guys. They're more yep. like your uncles and fathers in the group, I would take it. 
Yes. Yeah, so that makes it secure and your parents aren't going, okay, I'm going to come listen to you play tonight and I'm going to sit in the audience with a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, daddy's not having a stand <laughs> in yeah. front of the stage yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> so, yeah, tell us more. Um. Well, I get to play out pretty much every weekend. I actually have a show tomorrow night, which I guess will be in a couple of days. Um, and I'm pretty excited for this one. This is kind of a local uh, performance that I have, and they have it every year. And it's such a huge gathering every year for this. It's the Truck Stop Jamboree here in Oak Grove, Missouri. And uh, I've actually, they actually have been having it advertised on the radio, and I've heard my name on the radio, which is pretty cool. They, when they go to talk about it, they say local sensation Josie Milner. <laughs> it's just so cool to be able to hear my name like that. And mm-hmm. I've uh, had people contact me and saying they're coming just because I'm going to be there. And um, all the support I've had so far it has been pretty crazy, and I actually. It's almost hard to believe how much support I have and how people love what I'm doing and are there for me. And uh, it's just, it's been a crazy ride. And there's times where I, I don't even know how I'm doing it or how I'm going to get through the next step. But everything tends to work out for the best. And I, I wouldn't want to trade it for anything else. Well, you're enjoying it and it has not become a job. And I think that's going to be the thing that you're going to remember the most. As long as you're enjoying it and you're having fun at it, it will always be the fun thing to do and enjoying it and yeah you'll inspire other people as you're going along which is part of the reason why you're on the show in the first place is to inspire other people that are around in your age group to go hey yeah you know, this is a dream and I'm enjoying it it's not something that I feel it's work I'm just enjoying it because just even when we got into our conversation just at the beginning well off air let me tell you, people, when I just said hello, she started off with a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> she's bubbly. She's vivacious. She's a lot of fun. I can only imagine what it would be like to sit in her audience and just listen to her sing and watch her perform with her her band and, well, band family, if you want to call it that, and uh, just see how she goes. So tell us about your dancing and... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, that was so long ago. I did that whenever I was uh, about eight years old. And I guess for you, it's a lot longer than it is for me. But um, you know, for being eight years old and doing stuff like that, I literally had practices pretty much every night of the week, except for one day here or there. And with dance, I was traveling around all across Missouri, going to different dance competitions. And uh, it was pretty a pretty hectic schedule even then. <laughs> so I guess I've always had this crazy busy schedule. But uh, I loved it. And still today I'm in show choir. So I still get to incorporate my dancing. And then I still get to do my singing. So that that's it works out for me. But uh, there are times where I'll catch myself dancing in my room. <laughs> just along with my music. And, you know, probably looking like a total retard or whatever. Looking so weird. But uh, I, I really enjoyed it, and I actually, I do miss it. There are days where I'm just like, hmm, I wonder what would have happened if I would have stuck with it. But Well, you can always become the next Shakira of country music, <laughs> and you can dance to your music. <laughs> there we go, there we go. I'll have some ballroom dancers behind me. <laughs> My backup dancer. There you go. Hey, anything is possible. The world is yours to make it the way you want it to be, girl. Go for it. <laughs> Now, here's the one that actually floored me when you said this. You were in rodeo. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. Um, I did rodeo for eight years before I got into my music, and that's actually what I was doing up until I got into my music. And that's where I thought my career was going to go was in rodeo. My dad did it when he was younger, and he's the one who got me into it. Um, whenever I was actually first born, he first saw me. He literally, he he's like, yep, the mobile racing legs. And uh, it was pretty funny because that's, that's one of the events that I strived in, and uh, not to brag or anything, but I was actually pretty good at it. I have 12 belt buckles at home that I get to look at and remind me of my old life and uh, what I miss. But I went from performing in the rodeo arena on my horse to performing, say, after um, the rodeo for my friends that I ran in the arena with. So I still get it because along with my rodeo, it was pretty much another big family. Um, I got I didn't get to see them all the time, but I got to see them pretty much every weekend. And uh, we came really close. And so I do still get to see them sometimes. 
which makes it awesome. They do come to some of my shows if they're able to get in and whatnot. But I I loved rodeo and to be able to be in the arena on my horse and be going so fast and you know literally feel the wind blowing in my face and blowing my hair back. It's one of them things that uh, I try to incorporate as much as possible. But with me performing every weekend doesn't necessarily doesn't necessarily happen all the time. Mm-hmm. So why did you leave rodeo though? Um, well, it was actually what got me into music was I had a chance to go sing at a, a, a National Stick Guitar Convention. And that's kind of one where a flight switch flipped on in my head. And it's like, maybe you need to think about this seriously instead of rodeo. So I don't know. I just kind of decided to do a 180 on myself. And uh, I don't I don't know. It's just I've always been singing. And so for me to have something like that and to have an experience like that, I just went for it, and so far it's done good for me, but we'll see. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, you've done rodeo, you've done dancing, and you've also been a pom-pom cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? I did cheerleading also when I was younger. I haven't done it in high school. Um, I, there's no way I'd have time for it in high school, but... It's kind of crazy what they do in cheerleading now. But whenever I was in it, I wasn't doing anything that intense. But it was uh, it was so cute. I was always wearing my cheerleader skirt and having my pom-poms pom with me and having my hair up and piggy tails and my bows. And I was such a girly girl growing up, but I wasn't afraid to play in the dirt and go play in the mud. So it, I've kind of... I don't know. I've just went through so many different phases and so many different interests. And cheerleading was just one of them things I wanted to add to the list. <laughs> well, been there, done that. Okay, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Okay, we're not doing this in chronological order, but you also played T-ball. Yeah. Or softball, as you said. That yeah. would be the translation of it, at least in my world. <laughs> so, you were. tell us about your T-ball time. Uh, T-ball was pretty much the first thing I did. Um, I only did that for a couple years as well, and I honestly don't remember a whole lot from it because I was really little. But I do remember um, we used to have a blue healer, red healer mix, and she would go to the games with us. Whenever I'd be out in the field, I'd go to hit the ball off the tee, and the dog would go out and grab my ball and bring it back to me (laughs) instead (laughs) of letting them get it. So she had to be put in the car for the game. But, uh, you know, T-ball is just like softball. It was just not as competitive. And then most of the time, you had to get the little kid to pay attention to get the ball to get you out. So it wasn't it wasn't too hard. It was pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, let's see. Here's the one that I always we were joking about earlier. You were the one who was making all the three-point shots from the center court because you're only five foot two, so you're playing basketball. How did uh, you get involved in that? Yeah. <laughs> my dad has actually played basketball in high school as well, and he's the one who kind of got my interest in that. And I actually did that in middle school, so that was more recent. But, uh, um, you know, I wanted to try a sport. I'd never really been into sports except for my rodeo. And so I was like, hey, I'll give basketball a try. And I actually, I really did enjoy it. And the team that I was on, we made it to the semifinals, and then we got out by the team that my best friend was on. And so I was pretty upset by that one. But uh, it was it was pretty cool. I, of course, wasn't able to be the post or anything like that because there's no way I was tall enough for that. But uh, I was still able to do quite a bit in it. I think what got me to not like it as much was the running. I'm not a big running fan. <laughs> so, you know, that's pretty much what all basketball is, is running back and forth. And so that's that's kind of what took my interest away from that one. That one didn't last long. I can relate to that. <laughs> I can relate to that. It was like, well, I like to run, but I, the thing I couldn't stand was run down the court, stop, okay, let's see if I can get the ball, and okay, he lost, went back to the other end of the court, and you're running back down there, and somebody, of course, caught it before it got down there, so you're doing a quick stop, and then running all the way back to where you just left. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was just, it was nonsense to me, I was like, this is so, not even my kind of thing, so yeah. I dropped that and, and took up another interest. <laughs> yeah, uh, when I was... Um... When I was in my late teens, early 20s, I used to get into, uh, well, I became a lifeguard. And one of, one of the things that I was remembering, um, 
I was at the swimming pool and we were practicing swimming and all this, you know. They do just like in any other training. Just keep practicing. You already know how to swim, but it was just I don't know if you want to call it warm ups, whatever, but you get in the pool and you just swim, 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 swim. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy there that was, at least at that point in my life, he was probably my age, so I call him old. (laughs) (laughs) And, and, uh, but he's a real nice guy, but he was always hanging around the pool. What he was doing there, why he was always there, I don't know, but he's really nice. And he would just come in to swim. He didn't do anything else, he didn't do diving or anything else, he just swam. And he stopped me one day while I was just swimming the links of the pool. And he says, where did you learn how to marathon swim? And I go, marathon swim? He says, yes, <laughs> the way you're going at it, that is a marathon swimmer's way of swimming. So basically what I'm just getting at is I was used to be, a, a same thing with my running. I was always a long distance runner. I was never a sprinter. I was never sprinting in the pool, just trying to see who could get to the other end of the pool fastest. I was just one who just, I wanted to get there and, you know, I just want to enjoy the process of getting there. I guess that's just the way my life has always been. It's kind of like the saying of... Um, how do we say this? Uh, it's not the it's not the destination that counts. It's the journey that counts. Yeah, yeah. So I enjoy the journey. So I like to do things uh, in a quick manner, but still enjoying the process of getting there. Definitely. And sprinting just didn't know that was not enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now that I think about it, I don't know why I didn't think up swimming. I I love swimming. Whenever I was younger. I convinced myself I was a mermaid. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know why I didn't take up swimming. Gosh, I could have added that one to the list too. Well, hey, you're only 17, so who says I you am. couldn't do more than one thing at one time? <laughs> true. That is true. <laughs> I mean, even at my age, I'm still a teacher. Uh, I do a radio show. I build websites, and I do a whole lot of other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said you had to do just one thing, and I think that's one thing that your father was even telling you. It's just, hey, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So... Listen, we're going to take a little break here because Josie's going to introduce us to her video. She's not that happy with the way the... Well, she'll tell you about it. Introduce us to your video there, Josie. Well, this video you're about to hear, this is actually from one performance. It's from a fair last year, and it was so cold. I could see my breath. And so, of course, this isn't one of the best videos, but it's probably one of the most fun fairs that I've been at. But uh, this is Pontoon by Little Big Town. Okay. Hey, let's take a listen. Back this bitch out into the water. I tie all the cables and wires. Sample to the ashes. Grab your sample cruise and let's go. Who said anything about me?
other side would be in a land with the water side Can't beat the heat, so let's take a ride Hold up, hold you cool view, uh, video uh, but Josie beach balls in the winter <laughs> tell us about that oh my gosh yes um, well that song pontoon that was probably one of the biggest um, if not the biggest hit from Ooh. little big town and last summer that was on everyone's radio that's what everyone was listening to and uh, so you know we wanted to add it to the set list and every time we played that song out people loved that song <laughs> And uh, I kind of want to made it fun considering it's about pontoon and being out in the water and uh, just having a relaxing day. And whenever I think of being in the water, I think of beach balls. And uh, I was going to go as far as making my guys wear, like, goggles and the little rubber ducky around their waist on stage. But I didn't make them. Um, so I just stuck with beach balls. And uh, we bought them, and we had to blow them up by mouth, which took – Pretty much all my air out. So by the time I got up on stage, I was huffing and puffing already, and I hadn't even started. But uh, <laughs> it was it was the, the crowd loved them, and there was a couple times where people were hit in the face by them, or their drink kind of spilled. <laughs> and uh, you know, they they uh, caused some controversy, <laughs> but people really liked them. So I decided to keep them in, and that's what you saw in there. And they were kicked up on stage all the time, so I had to kind of dodge them like a ninja on stage. <laughs> See, so they definitely... They definitely kept the, the, the song and the performance yeah. very interesting. Yeah, there you go. There's You're using your dance moves already. That's cool. Oh, exactly. <laughs> I like to incorporate them as much as I can. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I bet the guys were happy that you didn't make them wear swimming trunks and rubber duckies. I'm quite sure the effect of having goose pimples <laughs> would have kind of taken away from the beach effect. Yeah, that night probably wouldn't have been a very good night for it. We were all, by the time we were done with that show, we were all just one to get in the car and leave and get in heat and uh, it was I, I believe it was one o'clock in the morning when that show ended so i ended up getting home to about three anyways mm -hmm. and stopping at home we stopped a quick trip at two o'clock in the morning so i can get some hot chocolate to warm me up and oh my gosh that show it was so cold but it was so fun it's probably one of my most favorite shows and definitely one of my most rememberable shows oh yeah Sometimes the impromptu shows are actually the most fun. <laughs> <laughs> and what makes it even better is we were on a, um, a gooseneck trailer. And so for our stage, was a gooseneck trailer. So it was, even, oh, it was. God, you weren't even inside? No, no, we were outside. Oh, <laughs> so man. It was so cold. Ay, jeez. Oh, well, so, <laughs> tell us something about your other performances, something that, of course, yeah, you, know, uh, you as the audience will be able to see on her new videos that are coming up, but tell us something about uh, some of your other shows and how you were, well, how about your first time getting up to sing uh, with your band? Were you nervous? Um, what? Um, I was actually very excited for my first show. It was at a place here in Green Valley, Missouri, called Whiskey Tango, and uh, it was actually it's kind of one of the biggest places out here. So for that to be my first show, it was almost intimidating, but it was so cool. And uh, you know, for it to be my first performance, I would have thought that I was going to be nervous and I was going to be shaking. But once I got up there, it was just kind of something I felt like I was. I guess you say born to do, and it was just natural. It was kind of a natural thing for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, once I got done, it was just kind of a 
moment of, I don't want to be done. I don't want to get off stage. <laughs> and uh, my mom, she she's always telling me how she doesn't know how I'm her daughter because there's no way she can do what I'm doing. And uh, it, it's pretty funny. And, uh, you know, my parents, they did sports growing up. So that's kind of where I got my interest for sports. But they uh, they never did any music. So we're still trying to figure out where my music came from. And uh, I'm able to do the things that I do when they couldn't ever even think about doing it when even the age that they're at now. So, uh, but, you know, I, I love performing and I love being on stage and being in front of people and knowing that people's eyes are on me and I get to entertain them. It's my most favorite thing about the uh, music industry. Hmm, that's very interesting because uh, I used to do music, and as we were saying, even off air once before. If the definition for being professional is you get paid for what you're doing, I guess I was a professional <laughs> vocalist at least at one point. <laughs> and for me, just being up and performing in front of somebody, it was just for me, it was just <laughs> sharing something that I enjoyed. So I learned how to do that because somebody pushed me up on stage when I was 11 years old, and I just stood there looking at the audience like, uh, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I can't do it. But <laughs> as time went on, I get into my teenage years and whatnot, I found myself being in basically your shoes, just being able to get out there and perform and loving it. And uh, it wasn't so much of just look at me kind of a thing, but I enjoyed the time I guess for me, the way I'm actually trying to say it is, I love singing, I love perf I love playing well, my trumpet, whatever it was that I was playing, and it gave me an audience, I guess, in saying, okay, I'm enjoying this and I'm sharing it with somebody, and that was my, if you say, that thing that pushed me to, to do it more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was always wanting to be in front of people um, to perform. And actually, the first memory I have of performing for people, whenever I was only about two and a half, three years old, and uh, I used to have um, a Lego table, and it had the big block legs on it. And I remember taking the leg off the table and getting on the tailgate of a truck and just start singing um, Combat and Rouge by Garth Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, I was only like two and a half, three at the time, and so... It's not something you would think I would have done for being so young, but I was always, no matter if I was in the car, if I was in front of people, or when we used to go horseback riding, I'd have to be the person in front, so everyone would make me sing, so I'd be like the radio out on the horse trails, and uh, I've just always had singing incorporated somehow, no matter how young or <laughs> to the age I am now, it's just always something I've loved doing. That's amazing to hear you say that. It is. And it's just this thing that you have something to tell. And I guess that's where I was just actually flabbergasted with you when we even started our just pre-interview. And just hearing you talk and you're so bubbly and vivacious and so full of life, you have something to share. I think this is going to be your role in life. This is not going to be the only thing. It's not going to be the crowning event of your life. But we're going to come back to a little bit more of Josie Milner right after these commercial breaks. Stay right with us. Are you ready to put an end to thinking about how you wish it were and take action? Take this step to find out more by going to coachingbyria.com and you can receive your free consultation session with Coach Rhea. Hi, this is Kate William Spencer of Your Thoughts, Your Reality Radio. Come and join us every Tuesday and Thursday for enlightening, humorous, and intriguing conversations with my guest or just a monologue of thoughts that I share, all to help you look at life and your choices differently. For more information, go to ytyrradio.tk. That's ytyrradio.tk. 
Hi, and welcome back. Our guest today is Josie Milner. Uh, hopefully you're having a lot of fun listening to her. She is so much fun to talk with. We're going to let Josie Milner go back into telling us a little bit more about herself on a freestyle basis. In other words, I'm just going to sit and listen part of the audience, and hopefully I don't get so lost in what she says that I will actually be a part of the show when it's <laughs> necessary. But anyway, Josie, go ahead. Tell us about life. Tell us about singing. Tell us about everything. Um, well, you know, like we've talked about, I've had many interests. And along with my rodeo, I did rodeo pageants. I, uh, I've i done quite a few of them, and I've claimed two state titles. I claimed Little Miss Rodeo Missouri in 2004 and Junior Miss Rodeo Missouri in 2010, and uh, as well as some other titles that I held with my youth association that I, that I did and uh, a couple local ones around here. And I loved doing beauty pageants because I was, I was able to dress up and look all pretty and ride my horse around the arena. And so that was kind of my two favorite things I was able to add in together. And um, that's kind of one of the things once I won my junior Miss Running Missouri title, I wanted to try to go to, because there was four state titles in Missouri for um, the Miss Rodeo. And I wanted to try to claim all four of them titles and because there's no one that's done that yet. But I uh, won't be able to, and I'm kind of upset by that, but <laughs> I'll be okay. And, uh, you know, once again, rodeo was such a huge part of my life, and it was, it's what I was doing every weekend, and it's where I thought my life was going to go. And then all of a sudden, I decided to do a 180 on myself and switch things around. And uh, <clears throat> actually... Uh, with my music, before even all my music, um, still part of my rodeo, I guess you could say. I am a Shriners kid. I am. Um, I've have. I have congenital scoliosis. My spine literally looks like an S. Well, it did, anyways. Should I say? And uh, the Shrine Circus, and then they used to have a Shrine Rodeo that I would sing the national anthem at. And uh, from singing the national anthem at the rodeos, I would sing the national anthem at the circuses that they would have, which helps raise money for the Shrine Hospital, which pretty much um, can pay for surgeries or any kind of medical expenses for um, anyone who just kind of needs a helping hand. And I actually had back surgery whenever I was 13. Um, I'm literally, I have a scar from the bottom of my neck to the middle of my back. And uh, I'm such, <laughs> it's pretty scary. And I wasn't allowed to be on my horse for, I believe it was about six months. And that's whenever I was still really big into my rodeo. So I was freaking out. I was like, my life is over. I was going to go fall in a hole and cry myself. And I was so upset. But once my doctor gave me the okay to get back on my horse, um, literally my next performance I had in the arena, my horse went down on me on the third barrel. And uh, it was pretty scary. My dad came running out to the arena screaming and yelling. And I think he was even cussing a little bit, too. And he, he was freaking out. And he was asking me if I was okay. And I was perfectly fine. And uh, I was like, Dad, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Is my horse okay? And he's like, I don't care about your horse. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was more worried about my horse than I was myself. But we ended up both being okay. So it all worked out to be fine. But uh, that, that, that's kind of one of the most scariest moments I've had. That's pretty much been one of the only times that I've um, came off of a horse. I've never been bucked up a horse. I've never been, uh, I've never fell off a horse or any of that. The only th other time that I've had a bad encounter, whenever I was about four, my dad used to break horses, and uh, he went out to go feed this one horse that he was breaking for someone, and I decided to follow him outside. And me being so little and not really knowing a whole lot about horses, I walked right behind the horse, and I was kicked <laughs> right underneath the chin. <laughs> the horse barely grazed me. And uh, if it would have been any closer, I probably could have been in some serious pain. And uh, it was it was kind of scary. Once again, it was another time my dad was cussing and screaming and yelling and freaking out. So mm. I, I make my parents crazy sometimes. <laughs> but I like to think that it's all okay in the end. Um, when you get to be a parent, if you ever choose to be one in your later life, you'll find out exactly why Dad came running out to the field. And when he, when you got kicked by the horse about why he was getting frantic, you'll understand that. <laughs> but then again, you'll also understand, you know, so, <laughs> 
from my own personal experience, you can understand some of the things that you did as a child will come back to you as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I, I mean, like I said, I, I hope I haven't caused my parents a whole lot of stress growing up. I know there have been times where I've even stressed myself out from stuff that I've done. <laughs> So yeah. I can't even imagine what they've gone through. Yeah. You sound like a good kid, so it sounds like uh, they probably just kind of like, okay, yeah, we've been through that, but at least it was, yeah, we can still laugh about it now. <laughs> yeah, and that's, a, that's another, my brother, um, my brother was worse than me. My brother was the one who was having to have parents go to the principal's office to go ask him what what he was doing. And there is this one time where my mom actually had to go up to the principal's office for my brother and uh, it's because my brother had wrote a note to himself. And when my brother was in high school, he notes weren't allowed, of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, he addressed the note to himself. And he was saying about how attractive he was and how he had, had such nice calf muscles. <laughs> you know, just really talking himself up. And the teach- and it was passed around the room. And the teacher got a hold of it. And the teacher was upset. And So, in other words, I guess into the principal's office, the principal was trying to charge my brother for sexual harassment to himself. And well, that would have been an easy. That would have been an interesting court case. <laughs> My mom, from what she says, she says she just kind of sat there and laughed. She didn't know what to think, and that, that's just how my brother was. He was always doing things like that, and um, he kind of terrorized me growing up. There'd be times where I'd wake up in the morning and he have a he'd have a dead bird hanging above my window or above my door. And uh, he would take my Barbie dolls and go burn them. And then he would go hang my stuffed animals up in trees. And he was so mean to me. But, um, you know, he's my big brother. So I guess he's kind of required to do that. And there was one time <laughs> where we were playing hide and go seek. And I hid in the dryer. And he felt like he wanted to start the dryer while I was in it. And uh, <laughs> that was scary. That was another, oh my gosh, I'm going to die moment. But... <laughs> Yeah, I've been in a dryer before. I'm not doing that one again. <laughs> I, I'm laughing because I'm thinking about your brother putting a dead bird in there. I'm just, my immediate response right now, of course, at my age would be, what are you, a cat? <laughs> I love you too, but don't bring me your food. <laughs> Whenever he would do that, I was only probably like five or six. and So, you know, for me, that was, that was traumatizing. Yeah. I was so petrified and but then there was another time where my dad got back at him. My dad was actually chasing him. Around. I don't even know why he was doing it, but my dad was chasing him around with the fork, and somehow my brother ended up sitting on, on the fork, and oh. <laughs> it was just so bad. We always have moments like that. That's kind of what has made my life so so interesting is to be able to tell stories like this. Now I know why you like to laugh so much. <laughs> <laughs> Like, if, seriously, if someone just came and lived in my house for a week, they would probably try to send me to the loony bin. <laughs> <laughs> my family is crazy, I tell you what, but it's it's okay. <laughs> yeah, life is to be lived and have fun with it. You, you, you take life too seriously. I mean, you heard me when I said uh, to you when we started our first part of our interview, just uh, getting to know each other. There's only really two prerequisites for my show, and uh, this I've never actually said on the air, but there's only two prerequisites for my show. One, you have something to say, something to share with other people, and the fact that you can laugh. Why? Because if you can laugh, you don't take yourself all that seriously, but you understand life is a progression. It is something that you live through. You have your times you fall down, and if you get back up, you have some more fun. You fall down, you get back up, and you keep... It's a learning process. Life isn't meant supposed to be... You just get up and everything is just a peachy, rosy day. If you live in a place like even where I live in Mexico, you have during the winter time, during the winter months, while everybody up in the United States, or at least most everybody in the United States, is going through winter, snow or rain or whatever the case may be, down here we have about six months of nothing but blue skies and sunshine. <laughs> and, well, that's great. There are times when you sit up here and go, God, can it just rain? How about some clouds or just <laughs> something? <laughs> So, you know, the expression that I grew up with was, um, if every day were a good day, there would be no good days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's actually what I was thinking. If, if everything was perfect every day, there'd be 
there'd be no word for perfect. There'd be like a non-existent word and it wouldn't be able to be imagined, I guess you could say. And it'd be boring. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know how boring that'd be? Just have to sit and do the same thing and have it being exactly how you want it every day. That'd be, that wouldn't even be a life. I don't know what you would call yeah. that. Well, it's just like even when I was a singer, I don't do it anymore, but when I was a singer, <laughs> <laughs> I still want to sing at some point in my life, but right now I don't really care that much about it. But uh, when I was a singer, even just doing radio, sometimes I listen to my shows most of the time. I don't because I really don't like listening to my voice, but <laughs> it's kind of weird, isn't it? But <laughs> there were times when I was singing and sometimes even when I do listen to my own show, I hear something and I just go, okay that's something I want to change. There's something I want to do differently. And it's always that that goal of let's find something that I can improve. Because my competition, at least for me anyway, my competition has never been about can I be better than Josie? Can I be better than John Doe sitting over there? My competition is with me. I want to be my best at whatever I'm doing. And that's, that's yeah. good enough for me. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it, it's, it is one of the things where I'm always going up against myself to try to um, do things better from what I've done before. And I, I relate with hearing my voice. I don't even like whenever we get my singles on, I don't even like listening to myself on a CD or in the car. It's just kind of one of them things that it's, I don't know, like I said, it's weird. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it, it's one of those things. Well, I'm assuming that you're going to say, or, uh, well, you have your own way of saying it, but... My way of saying it is, it's something I did, and I really don't want to hear it. I know what I did wrong, and I'll make the improvements as I can. But I don't always just listen to it just to hear the mistakes, because honestly, nobody really listens to your music that wants to hear your kind of music to listen to the mistakes. People will yeah. want to listen to you to hear how good you are and go, okay, they're human, so they're going to make a mistake. Don't worry about it. As long as the majority of their music is great, cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I, I really agree with that, yeah. I'm sorry, yes. Uh, <laughs> no, I was <laughs> coughing. Okay. Uh, anyhow, but um, let's see. Josie? I know at 17, you haven't had those big transitions in life, at least not as yet. Uh, you have a great family, crazy but cool brother, <laughs> <laughs> parents that love you to death, and a band who's like your second family. So tell us, what was it about your life? I know you touched on it earlier in the show. I'm going to slow it down just a little bit here. Um <laughs> Tell us about what it was in your life in a little bit more detail that got you to change from rodeo and dancing and, well, we won't consider cheerleading it as, as, as an occupation. <laughs> and softball for women is not something that you really want to do. And five foot two, unless you're actually doing, you know, free throws from mid-court <laughs> getting three-pointers yeah. you're really not going to have a career in that either <laughs> but what got you really into going in for for music well you know like i said um, music was something i was always wanting to incorporate in anything that i did and so at my rodeos i was singing the national anthem so i saw my rodeo aspect and i still have my singing aspect so it was just it, it was awesome but then i had a chance it was actually about two and a half years ago to go sing on the National Steel Guitar Convention. I was singing on the main stage down there. And I was invited by a, uh, a, a distant relative. And um, that was kind of my first moment of performing. And um, I was able to get all dolled up, of course, perform on stage. And where I played it, there was a lot of people of a um, substantial status, I guess you could say, say for country music. And um, so, you know, it was, it was almost scary for that to be my first performance. Um, in front of a lot of people and for them to be such amazing people on their career. But, uh, you know, I got up there and I, I did my thing and I, I loved every second of it. And whenever I was done, I ha was having them people coming up to me and telling me that I had something that I needed to pay attention to. And I had a lot of talent and I could go really far with it. And um, Leona Williams, who is actually a um, 
country music artist herself and is from Missouri. She was there, and she's the one who told me that I needed to think about my music seriously. I really had some serious potential and um, a lot of talent I needed to show off. And, you know, so for her to say something like that to me, I, I knew I had to pay attention to. I knew there was something there that I had to pay attention to. And uh, so, you know, I got to my I got home after that weekend, and I talked to my parents about it. And uh, they've always supported me no matter what. So once again, they supported me on the decision that I wanted to try to get into music and see where it would take me. And um, so, you know, I, I held auditions, and I got my band together. And things just haven't slowed down since then. Like I said, I, I had my first real performance with my band at Whiskey Tango. And then from there, I started getting fairs and started getting shows. And uh, this year has actually probably been one of the best years. And it's not even ha- – it's actually, I guess, it's about halfway over now. But I've had so many op- amazing opportunities so far. And uh, I've been able to meet so many amazing people. And uh, I was able to go on a radio tour. And I went to Kansas, Iowa, Nebraska, and uh, Tennessee, and Kentucky, and I was able to travel so much, meet so many DJs, and go to so many different radio stations, and, you know, it's just one of the experiences that you don't, a lot of people don't get to do, and it's very rare, and so for me to be able to do this, and for only being 17, it's uh, not a life I'd want to trade at all, um, I'm, I'm going to be a senior in high school, and, uh, you know, I still manage to go to school for eight hours a day, and then once I get home, I start working on my music, and then uh, uh, the next day, I'll wake up and go back to school, and I'll go working on my music again, or go to rehearsal and whatnot, and somehow I've managed to make everything work out. There's There has been ups and downs. There has been actually quite a few downs that I've had to face. But um, I've always seen the light, I guess you could say, at the end of the tunnel. And um, everything has been so amazing. And uh, it's just so many memories I've been made. And there's so many people that have inspired me and have made me want to keep going at what I'm doing. And, um, you know, all the support I've had, it's, <laughs> it's, it's been, like, the only word I can use to describe it is crazy. It's, uh, it's a crazy life. It's a crazy career. And, uh, but it's me. I wouldn't want to trade it for anything else. If it wasn't, if this wasn't what I was doing, then I honestly don't know what I would be doing. This is, um, I guess you say my love. <laughs> I, I love doing this and I love being able to be in front of people. And, uh, we actually had to do a report. I'm doing summer school right now, which is kind of a weird thing for me. Um, but we had to do a report on, um, our wants, needs, goals, and values. And for me, I put one of my needs as inspiration and my teacher kind of thought, that's not a need. I don't know what you consider that. But then I explained it to her, um, how I need inspiration for other people to be able to push me forward in this career. And, uh, you know, from that concept, she kind of thought if that was a good idea. So, but... <laughs> no, I'm laughing because it's oftentimes... You know, I, I think I told you before we got on the air that I ha- I'm i still a teacher. I've taught for, um, yeah, I, I, I told you that there, you gotta, your life is, you can do anything you want. If you know about all of the things that I've done in my life, you'd probably go, well, I got a lot of catching up to do. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it amazes me on how some teachers are just going, if it's not the way that I am teaching it, the way that I see it, it doesn't exist or it's not that right way. And I oftentimes find myself in front of students thinking about what the student said because as a teacher we should be able to still be able to learn even from our students because sometimes that innocence actually takes you a lot further than where it goes. I think it was John Lennon who was quoted as saying, he says, my parent, my mother always taught me that uh, your goal in life should be to be happy. He went to school, teacher asked, uh, what is your goal in life? He says, to be happy. He says, uh, that's not a goal. He, well, it's, uh, no, I forgot exactly how it goes, but it's something along the lines, well, you don't understand life. And that's basically what you're just saying is, I need the inspiration because you are a performer. You need that inspiration. As a writer, you need the inspiration to do a, even a radio show. Sounds probably weird to some people, but you need that inspiration to do these things because... Uh, if you don't have inspiration, you're just going through something rote. It's just, okay, I work in a factory, and I put part A into part B, and it goes down the line, and somebody puts C and D together. You're looking for that because you have an expression to give. 
Did I talk too much? <laughs> no, no. I'm. It's just, um, you know, for um, her, because she actually understood it once I was done with it. And it is. It kind of seems weird. Like, why, why would you need inspiration? But if it wasn't for people inspiring me, I wouldn't be able to continue on in what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's the people who are supporting me and backing me up and being there for me that makes me want to push forward and makes me want to do this. And Because it's pretty much for the people who are there for me that I'm doing it for. And uh, so, you know, I have to have their inspiration to be able to, to mm-hmm. do it. And, you know, if you don't have inspiration in anything, just like with if you have a career, if you want to be a teacher, you have to be inspired by your students to teach. And it, it is a need. And, you know, for her um, to kind of understand at the end, it kind of made me happy. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. It's another, it was another view that she took on it. Mm-hmm. So. so let me ask you. You're 17 years old. You're traveling around the country. You're singing. And you're still in high school. So how do your peers see this and et cetera, et cetera? <laughs> the reason why I ask is because I'm quite sure there's other people that are in your age group that are going, well, I'd really like to do that. But, you know, and they're, you know how 17-year-old people think. They're just like, oh, I'm not sure if I'll be accepted or do I want to do this? And it's, you're doing it. So give us your side of that. Yeah, my my friends, my peers at school. Um, at first, when I first started this career, they they literally would just joke around with me, um, or I guess at me um, about it. They would say that it wasn't it was wasting my time, or that it wasn't going to go anywhere with it. And uh, so, you know, of course, that that really hurt me because this is what I wanted to do, and I really didn't have the support from my friends. But now that they understand that I've done this for two and a half years now, this is what I want to do. This is what I am doing. This is what, um, if I'm gone for a week at school, this is what I'm out doing. So I'm obviously, I'm obviously being very pa- passionate for it. And I think they've actually realized that. And w- this past year, they became very supportive. And I've actually um, I've had a lot of support from my teachers, even. My teachers have really stepped it up this past year. I've really showed a lot of interest in my music career. And my school has even stepped up. and Because um, there was times this past year where I had to miss a week of school to be gone to, for my radio tour or for whatever and uh, they've come to understand that I'm not just missing school. I am out doing something, and it's not um, just mm-hmm. to be out of class yeah, for a day. Staying home playing and, Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, you know, they're actually working with me for my attendance. So um, that stays up because I am in National Honor Society. I'm a straight-A student, like I said. And uh, so, you know, I have to keep my attendance and my grades up to be able to be in National Honor Society. And uh, so they're – working with me so I can still kind of live (laughs) the normal teenage life. But, uh, you know, it's like I said, like I've said, it's, it's crazy. And uh, a lot of people probably wouldn't look at it the way I do and um, realize how wonderful it is and how amazing it is. They'd probably look at it and be like, I don't understand why you're doing this. This is just way too much for me. But um, that's just, it's just what I want to do. And I have to be able to be determined to be able to do this career. And, you know, I, I'm determined. I believe in myself 100%, and I know several other people who believe in me. And uh, from all that support and, once again, all the inspiration that I've been given, it, I'm, I'm, I'm going for it, and I'm not going to give up until I get where I want to be. That's the way to live your life, uh, seriously. And for those of you who are naysayers, just remember, she's doing her passion that makes her an individual. You are an individual. What is your passion? What are you going for? It's easy to sit up here and say, no, 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 you're not going to be successful. Nah, nah, nah. You're not going to do this. What are you doing instead of tearing somebody down? What are you doing about your own life? Live your life. Encourage somebody else to be their best. Now, let's ask a question here because now you just perked my attention again. <laughs> like you've never stopped <laughs> anyway. But <laughs> you're an honor student. And you're a performer. You're on the road. And all these things, what are you going to do when you get out of high school? Are you just going to go straight into music, or are you going to continue to do education and music? Um, well, you know, I, I've education's always been important to me. Um, I've, all, I've always had good grades. And actually, my freshman year of high school, I ended with geometry with a B+. Plus. And I literally cried for the rest of the day because I was so upset from that one B plus. And uh, so, you know, education is very important to me. And so I definitely do want to continue my education after high school. Now, uh, 
with how busy my schedule is and having to go to college or go to classes every day or every other day or whatnot, um, I would love to be able to do that. However, and realistic with how things are right now, I don't see how I'm going to be able to do that. But I definitely do want to at least do online classes. So I still have um, an education behind me and something to back me up in case this doesn't work out, which I'm really, really hoping it does. I want this more than anything. But, uh, you know, crazy things can happen. So I'm going to have um, something else there to back me up. And, uh, you know, I do want to continue my education. So uh, I'm going to try to do that as much as possible. There was a friend of mine I used to have back in Illinois, back when I lived there. <clears throat> he used to tell me, and there's something that's stuck in my mind ever since, and this has been probably 30 years since then. And he used to tell me all the time, he says, there's nothing standing between what you want and where you are besides air and opportunity. If yeah. you want it, girl, go for it. You'll find a way. All you have to do is put your efforts into it. It'll show up. You already <laughs> know that. You just probably never looked at it from that point of view. Yeah. So... Yeah, so what do you want to do? You want to become a brain surgeon and a vocalist at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll sing to my patients while I'm using the tree. <laughs> sure, why not? While you're in the operating room, put on one of your CDs and go, this is me singing, and here, I'm going to operate on you right now. <laughs> no. no um, I just don't want to do something in music. Um, I, d I don't really want to be a teacher. Um, I'm just... It's just not something that interests me, but I do want to maybe possibly major in songwriting or somewhere around the aspect. And I've also want had a kind of a bit of an interest here lately in uh, business, such as like music business. And so that's another thing that can always be there. Um, you know, business is pretty is what makes all the money, and so it's all it's a huge aspect. And so I feel like um, with if I took classes that would be with music business, I'd still have my music, and I'd still be able to help out my community. So it'd still be um, a win-win situation. So um, I'm thinking of them two things, and maybe even graphic design. I really like graphic design, too, but <laughs> we'll see. Why I don't not? know. You just said something that just perked my attention because I don't hear this too much, but um, especially from people in your age group. You said something about giving back to your community, being a, I will assume you're trying to say or want to say, or whatever, I'm not going to try to put words in your mouth. <laughs> you want to give back. You want to be an inspiration for whatever community you live in, whether it be still there in Missouri or if you move to, who knows, Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about that. What? Uh, how do you put all this together and still even consider being a part of a community? Well, I grew up um, in a small town. Um, the like, largest population we have right now is 4,000, and that's recently just grown a lot. But, or grew, growed, oh my goodness, hmm. grew. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, it's, I'm not going to lie. It's been kind of a um, stressful town. I'm here this past year was very stressful for high school. I was hearing the girls starting drama between every other girls and guys starting drama and everything else. And, you know, it's a town where once you even know your own business and everyone else finds out yeah. about it. But um, it, it's where I grew up, and it's where um, I, I became the person I am today. And uh, even though I haven't physically been giving given anything from my community, I have emotionally. And uh, so, you know, I, I might not necessarily... Um, give back emotionally but I want to be able to help out in any way that I can and um, like <laughs> I've told my mom before that if I do get to be in that spot like where I want to then I'm going to come back and have a huge benefit concert for my town and raise money to better the businesses and everything else and uh, I, I, I just kind of want to repay I guess you could say what I've been given so much of and you know the humbling of people in town and the support of people in town just um just a kind of a way to give back and say thank you. There you go, because there's usually a lot more people that support you than trying to tear you down. So that's actually a wonderful thing. Uh, one last thing here um, that I just want to cover and is more of an inspiration. I hope it's an inspiration for you is the fact that uh, there's always going to be people that want to tear you down. And you know, as I said earlier, they're called the naysayers. You know, no, you can't and no, you won't. But uh, even in some of my other programs that I do, we talk about how people want others to conform. This is the way we do it. You should do it this way, too. And 
you seem to have the gumption enough to say, no, this is me. This is Josie. I am going to be me, and I'm a nice, kind, gentle, happy-go-lucky person that has my own individuality and something that I want to share with the world and on a Greg scale or even on a small scale and you can be a part of that and I really celebrate that in you you are a wonderful person at 17 and I hope that continues on for the rest of your life as we come to a close on the show I just want to ask do you have anything that you would like to give as words of inspiration because definitely there is a lot of inspiration in you and your life so do you have anything (laughs) that you'd like to say to our audience before you go um well you know being only 17 a lot of people don't tend to take me seriously considering i am so young but um i do want to say you have to go out and reach for your dreams you have to go out and accomplish your goals and accomplish your dreams um if you don't set goals if you don't set dreams for yourself then you're not going to really get anywhere. You have to know what you want in order to get where you want to be. And uh, for me, and being so young and knowing what I want to do, it's kind of a, yeah, you really don't want to pay attention to it, but you it's kind of a thing where you need to. There, miracles happen every day. And for me with this career, um, it's crazy at how much I've been able to experience already, and it's just getting better every day. And it's for me, it's being determined and being passionate and uh, wanting to do this career you you have to go out and you have to just go for it. You can't um, kind of hesitate. You just have to put your all into it. And as long as you're determined, as long as you're passionate, and as long as you know what you want, you're going to achieve your goal and you're going to achieve your dream someday. You just got to keep at it. Definitely. Well, Josie, I definitely enjoyed this interview or this conversation as we usually do it. <laughs> and it was definitely a conversation. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm glad that you were here and you always have an open door to come back to the show anytime that you want. Okay, we don't have to wait on your agent. Thank you, Michael, for, <laughs> for bringing her to my attention. Uh, so you have an open door here anytime and uh, hopefully you'll come back again sometime. Definitely, and thank you so much. I definitely really appreciate uh, it's it. It's my pleasure. And thanks to everyone for being here and listening to her. I hope you guys will support her if you're nearby. And, uh, oh, by the way, what is your website? Oh, my website is josiemilner.com, J-O-S-E-Y-M-I-L-N-E-R. And there you see pictures and where I'm going to be at next. And then also at the bottom of the page, I have my links on my social media, <laughs> like we were talking about earlier. I am your average teenager. I have my Facebook, my Twitter, my YouTube, and my Reverb Nation. And uh, I love keeping contact with the fans. So, uh, you know, send me a hey or a hi, and I'd be more than happy to respond. <laughs> okay. Great. Thanks for that information. Thanks, everybody. Support. Be there for Josie Miller. If you're in the area, any place that she's performing, please go see her. I'm quite sure she's great in live in life in vivo okay fine i live in mexico anyway have (laughs) yourself a great evening we'll talk to you again in the near future be well thank you for joining us here on your thoughts your reality radio please make a note to join us again on our next broadcast For more information, visit our website at www.ytyrradio.tk. That's www.ytyrradio.tk. Our theme music is Soul Control by B.O. Crew under a Creative Commons License 3.0. See our website for more information.